Burton-upon-Trent in Staffordshire has long been known as a brewing town, and many that now live in the area would have had ancestors work at the brewery at some point. The National Brewery Centre showcases Burton's brewing heritage as Britain's brewing capital, with a museum which houses thousands of objects, which tells the story of all the breweries in the area. The museum was first opened in 1977 as the Bass Museum. The buildings were once part of Bass Engineering Department. Joiners, wheelwrights, blacksmith and cloggers would have all worked their trade here. Chemists working in the 19th century discovered that Burton's water was perfect for brewing as it was rich in calcium sulphate which helps keep the alkali balance of the water just right. Before the science of brewing was fully understood, breweries would travel to a town that had the right type of water for the beer they wanted to produce. In the 19th century, pale and bitter beer was popular, which Burton's water was ideal for. That was why so many brewers moved to Burton. Men who worked in the dusty maltings in Burton would often develop farmer's chest, a form of TB, and were said to have gone for a Burton when they died. Today, we use the phrase gone for a Burton to describe something that has gone missing. This comes from the Second World War, when pilots did not return from their mission, as it was considered bad luck to say that they had been killed. Hops were mostly grown in Hereford, Worcestershire and the South East, and to make a little extra money, families would often take working holidays to the countryside to pick hops. Bitter hops came to Britain in the 15th century. Before, ale was flavoured with herbs, spices and fruit. William Bath and his brother ran a carrying business between London and Manchester via Ashbourne, Burton and Hinckley. William died in 1787. His son, Michael Bath, took over the brewing side of the business. Michael died in 1827 
and the business passed to his son, Michael Thomas Bass. Michael Thomas used his influence as a shareholder in the Midland Railway to bring the railways to the region. Michael Arthur Bass succeeded his father as chairman of directors in 1884. At this time, the brewing industry was under pressure from the temperance movement. To protect their share of the market, brewing companies started to buy public houses. Many breweries raised the money for this by becoming public companies and selling shares. The Bass Company grew even more as a result. Pubs have been an important part of British culture for centuries. During the Middle Ages, inns were popular and thriving in trade due to travelling pilgrims. After the Second World War, the brewing industry underwent changes and providing a variety of beer became key to a pub's success. Metal kegs replaced wooden casks between the 50s and 60s along with the introduction of jukeboxes and fruit machines. In order to survive today's economic climate, pubs concentrate on attracting a wide range of customers by being more family orientated and offering food. As you walk the galleries, you can get a real sense of the scale of the industry and the economic value it must have had in the area. There are many machines and bits of equipment on display, along with information boards detailing their history. At the museum you will find more than just machinery which was part of the brewing process, but vehicles and cars which were equally as important to the brewery.
The museum is home to two shire horses, a breed which was developed by King John around 1200 when he bred English great horses with hairy leg Flemish stallions to produce large and strong horses to give his knights the advantage in battle. Over the centuries, military technology developed and the breed's role evolved into that of the modern day Shire Horse. Outside are a collection of vintage vehicles, several of which have a strong link with Burton. It is great to get up and close to these vintage vehicles, which have recognisable logos such as Worthington's and Tetley's. Boreys depended on boilers like this one and the men that worked them to provide enough steam to power engines and to provide hot water. Boreys depended on steam power during the Victorian period and the Robry engine was one of a pair built to power eight new malt houses in Sleaford, Lincolnshire. This engine worked up to Sleaford's malting's closure in 1959.
The joiner's shop was built in 1866 and was a working area up until its closure in the late 1960s. Since opening its doors in 1977, the museum has seen many changes. In order to maintain profits and growth, companies have been taken over, merged or even disappeared from the local landscape. It was shortly after the opening of the museum that Bass took over the Colesburg Tetley Brewery and the Burton site became the largest brewery in the UK. But government restrictions, which govern competition in the market, limited growth and opportunities, which led to Bass selling the brewing side of the business. The American family owned brewer, Coors, brought the Burton site as part of their strategy to expand into Europe and is currently the world's fifth largest brewer. In this gallery, you'll get a sense of the day-to-day -day operations, its influence on society and just how worldwide the brewery was. There are so many objects on display that it is easy to lose yourself for a few hours as you explore. Football fans will remember the days when Carling sponsored the Premier League and the free footballs you used to get with every pack of beer. models show how ale was transported worldwide and just how big the industry was. In this model, You'll see just how big the brewing industry once was in Burton, 
and how it has changed over the years. James Eade was born in 1827 in Blackford, Perthshire. Aged just 15, he headed south to make his fortune. He moved to Fasley near Tamworth to work with his brother in the malting trade, and from there he would often visit Burton. During his visits he noticed the popularity of Burton Ales, and being a shrewd businessman he decided to turn his hand to brewing. James Eade built up an excellent reputation through working hard and insisting on the best methods, and the business grew steadily until 1883, a new large-scale brewery was built. Burton enjoyed a golden age of brewing, when it boasted many famous sons, such as these in the industry. These days may have passed, but Burton remains enormously important in the brewing industry. Marston, Thompson and Evershed's Albion Brewery is still brewing in the town, not to mention the small but much loved microbreweries such as the White Shield Brewery and Burton Bridge. For me, this pub was my favourite thing, as it takes you back to a bygone age, where pubs were at the height. Sadly the museum is due to close at the end of October 2022 and the artefacts face years in storage and an uncertain future, though I hope they do remain in Burton. Being big business in its heyday, Burton attracted many distinguished guests, and brewers would often choose to show off the scale of their breweries from their own private railway. Instead of an ordinary open wagon, guests would travel in a specially built saloon, known as the Director's Coach.
The National Brewery Centre is an interesting place to visit, packed with history from the golden age of brewing. Though soon, this museum will take its place in the history books, as it closes its doors for the final time, which will be a great and sad loss for Burton. <laughs>